engineers and scientists um, persist in the discovery and the transformation of the unknown to the unknown. With the development of advanced technology, we now have systems that can give us predictive algorithms, artificial intelligence, the internet of things that can predict future occurrences with quite good accuracy. I know that philosophically speaking, the unknown is often connected with the future. But today, I present a paradigm shift to that trend of thought, that the future in the 21st century and beyond is more known than the past. It is indeed the past that is unknown. And today, we will explore the past. We have systems and devices like Alexa and Siri that we could ask many questions about the future. In my home, most of the mornings are filled with conversations with Alexa. Alexa, what's the weather forecast today? Alexa, what's the weather forecast tomorrow? And Alexa is connected to lots of other connected devices. And Alexa can accurately tell me the weather forecast next week. Alexa can tell me the weather forecast for a couple of months. In the near future, with the rapid advancement in technology, I would be able to ask Alexa, tell me, what's going to happen to me 50 years from now? Where will I be? And I'm hoping wishfully Alexa will say, a place where you can eat lots of chocolates and ice cream without adding any pound. <laughs> but when I asked Alexa, who invented the light bulb? This wasn't the person Alexa put forward. Louis Latimer, the first African-American inventor to invent the light bulb. He's the first unknown unknown that I present to you today. But let's explore what the concept of unknown unknown is. An unknown unknown, the term is borrowed from the field of risk and change management. Though I'm an engineer, I went forward to the field of risk and change management to borrow that term. The term unknown unknown means Things that we do not know, that we do not know. Lots of known unknowns. A paper by S.D. Kim presents to us that unknown unknowns are those things that people tend to find impossible to conceive. Or even if those things exist, they tend to ignore them because of preconceived ideas that they're actually impossible to conceive. Another paper by Alice in 2009 says that the main obstacle of dealing with unknown unknowns is because many people, again, have difficulty in imagining that they exist. And some people have difficulty in coping with unknown unknowns and so actively ignore them. My question to us today is, do we ignore unknown unknowns? Do we find it hard to imagine that an unknown unknown like Louis Latimer would exist? And today, I'll take you on an exploration of other known unknowns. I've already presented Louis Latimer, and I present another unknown unknown, Rosalind Franklin, a woman that is known or should be known for her work for the um, development of DNA helix structure. However, she was not given credit to her work. Someone else took credit for the work she had done, another unknown unknown another phenomenon common to, common, common to unknown unknowns. Most of the work that unknown unknowns do, the credit is not given to them, but given to others. And so let's go even further to the Hall of Fame of more unknown unknowns. The unknown unknowns that I present to you today are mainly innovators, engineers, and scientists. Because I'm an engineering professor, and I feel that it's my calling to educate the next generation of engineers, scientists, and engineers. And it is only by making visible the invisible that we can bridge the gaps in knowledge, in perceptions of our beliefs that often lead to egregious, erroneous narratives. So join me as we explore the unknown unknowns. The next unknown unknown. Oops. Sorry, I think my slides off. <laughs> there we are. The next unknown unknown is Mary Anderson. What is she known for? 
the windshield wiper. We drive our cars every day and we wipe the rain. A couple of weeks ago, it was raining in California. Would you ever think that the windshield wiper was innovated by Mary Anderson? The next unknown unknown, Cardi Lomar. She innovated radio encryption. Anytime you've got encryption, you're typing out your password and it's all encrypted. Did you ever conceive that it would be someone like Hardy Lomar that innovated the concept of radio encryption? Grace Cooper, known for her work, or should be known for her work, for early programming. Anytime we write codes, do we think that it was someone like Grace Hopper that was behind the concept of programming? And pardon me, but I'm going to go on a bit. <laughs> Run chatter for the toaster. When you look at your digital toaster, for those of you that like to eat toast in the morning, do you ever think that it's someone like Run Jetter that invented the digital toaster? Do you think that it's somebody like Benjamin Montgomery that invented the propeller for a steam engine? Or someone like Thomas Jennings that invented the dry cleaner? Or someone like Omalu that investigated the, the, the concoctions that NFL players have. Or someone like Olo Oluol that looked into and came up with innovative surgical skills and surgical methods for um, children with fetal disorders. I ask you today, what other unknown unknowns exist? We have other known unknowns that exist. They just are not countries, they just are not people. They could also be countries and places. Africa is not normally known or connected with scientific innovation to advancement. But I propose to you today that Africa actually set the pace for innovation in science and technology. We have the NAPTA flyer in the northern Sudan. The NAPTA Playa is the oldest archaeoastronomy site in the world, about a, about a thousand years older than the Stone Age, for those of you that know the Stone Age. And it's a megalith that tracks the movement of stars. I also present to you an African maiden that for hundreds of years has used the chalk, the white chalk, as sunscreen because the white chalk is known to have titanium dioxide, which protects us from um, the sun. So now I have presented quite a few unknown unknowns, but there is one that I did not present yet, and that is the real McCoy. And who is the real McCoy? The real McCoy is actually Henry McCoy, an African-American inventor that has 57 patents under his belt. He's known for the innovation of the locomotive lubricant. He's also known for the innovation of the ironing board. He also invented the lawn sprinkler. So next time when you're ironing, think of the real McCoy when you're using your ironing board. He was an African-American man that is the real McCoy. Next time you're using your lawn sprinkler, think of the real McCoy. Or if you do happen to ride, on a locomotive, <laughs> not sure where we find that, but if you do happen to write on that, also think of the real McCoy. Now I've presented all this, you must be asking, so what is she going to ask us to do? I implore you to join me and be one of the categories of people that I'm going to present to you now. And the categories of people that I'll present to you now are based on my own personal fascination with light, optics and electromagnetism, which drove me to pursue telecommunications engineering, because I believe and I know, we all know that light makes the invisible visible. The first category of people that can make a change in illuminating the unknown unknowns are a billion sun. Recently, um, scientists in the University of Nebraska Lincoln created the brightest light ever created by humans. The light can travel a thousand light years and is known to be billion times brighter than the sun. 
But what is fascinating about this light is that it's different from normal light. We see it because when a light beam hits an object, the electrons produce just one photon, and it's in the scattering of that photon that we see. However, the billion light will, um, scatters a thousand photons, and it's in this scattering of a thousand photons that the object that the billion light hits appears different. A billion light people are people that are disruptive in changing the narrative, changing the narrative of the unknowns by producing scattering, illuminating the unknowns. The stories you tell your children, the stories you tell your friends, the stories you tell your co-workers about the unknowns, bringing them to light, those are the billion sons. And all of us here could be the billion sons. I did my research on Google and produced these images. And so some of them are not too far-fetched. But it's for us to also do a little bit of research and change the narrative and tell the stories. One of the best billion sons that I know is my past mother, um, Cecilia. She started out as a biology teacher and then went on to become a principal and then went on to become the first lieutenant governor of the southeastern region in Nigeria. But what was even more amazing about her life was when she was a principal. She always opted to go to the worst schools. And within a year, she would change the story of the worst schools to the best schools in the state. And when we ask her, why do you bother? Why do you do this? She'll say to us, if not me, then who? And that's the question I ask us today. If not us, then who? The second category of people that I present to you are the people that I call the Khazars. The Khazar is the brightest natural light in the universe. It is produced when the black mass absorbs stars in the galaxy and after a period of time emits of the brightest light called the Khazar. The Khazar can travel 9 billion years. So who are the Khazars? The Khazars are people and organizations that have the infrastructure and resources to metaphorically travel 9 billion light years. Your government, your educators, your textbook publishers that have the resources to change the narrative that can introduce the known unknowns into textbooks and make the known unknowns more aware to people. In conclusion, I'm going to answer a question that I'm sure you're all wondering. So what's the importance of illuminating the known unknowns? I love math, and I'm sure most of you do too. <laughs> and I'm going to answer that question with a simple algebraic equation. When we're trying to solve an algebraic equation, we have an equation like y is equals to x plus 2. If y is 2, x is the unknown, find x. What do we do? We need to find x, and in this case, x is 2, so that we can have a balanced equation. It is important to find the known unknowns so that we can have a balanced equation. It is important to find the known unknowns for equity. In his book, The Dead of Night, John Maxson says, why do you kill the caterpillars and complain that there are no butterflies? Why do we complain that underrepresented students are not achieving, that there are not enough female students in engineering or science? When we know that one of the important things that we need to do is to make unknown unknown knowns, and in so doing, we will balance the equation and create equity. This is not just for education, but in our communities, our workplaces, and in the world globally. In conclusion, I'd like to state a quote from Deepak Chopra, and he said, the love of the unknown is the love of knowledge. Love is empowering. Love is exciting. Let us illuminate the unknowns. Let us illuminate and embrace the known unknowns and make them known. I hope and I pray that you all whether you decide that you're a billion sun, shining like the sun a billion times more than the sun, or you're a chasm, traveling metaphorically nine billion years, that in love, you'll change the narratives and change the stories 
of the known unknown and balance the equity algebraic equation. Thank you.